what it's like to live in Washington, D.C. I'm Chris. This is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informed, and entertaining. This is a live stream, and in this live stream, I'm going to be talking all about what it's like to live in Washington, D.C. Well, not just me. I actually, through the magic of the internet, I'm joined by special guest Rob from Trip Hacks DC. Rob, welcome to the live stream. Thanks, Chris. Glad to be here. Yeah, it's glad to have you. Uh, and so if you're on the live stream, I look forward to chatting with you guys. Uh, if you've got questions for Rob about what it's like to live in D.C., uh, definitely ask him. Washington, D.C. is our nation's capital of the United States. It's a big tourist destination, and so most of us experience it that way. Uh, but I thought it would be interesting to talk to Rob, who not only is a tour guide in Washington, D.C., he's also got a really neat YouTube channel called Trip Hacks D.C. with videos all about Washington, D.C. So my first question for you, Rob, is uh, how many people actually live in the District of Columbia? Well, that's a great question, Chris, because I think it's a much bigger city than a lot of people give it credit for. So the District of Columbia is the city, what we would call the city, and it has a population of 700,000. And then we have the greater Washington, D.C. metro area, which includes parts of Maryland and Virginia. And when you include all of those, it's about 6 million people, which I always like to say is more than the entire Republic of Ireland. So it's a pretty big place. All right. Yeah. And I think most people, when they visit it, they just visit the part that's like the National Mall and the museums and, and assume that's D.C. Um, what's, what's something that you think maybe people would expect about Washington, D.C. that really, really isn't that way? Well, if you watch movies about Washington, D.C., I think you might come here and expect that everybody's a politician or everybody works in politics in some way. And I think that that's really not the case. Uh, I would say a very, very tiny, small percentage of people actually work in politics on Capitol Hill or whatnot. And most of us are just regular folks doing regular jobs and uh, going about our lives. Yeah, right on. Uh, so what what keeps you in D.C.? Like, you know, so you just said uh, you're, you're a regular guy. You're not a politician. So it's obviously not politics that's keeping you there. What, what keeps you there? It's definitely not politics. Well, Trip Hacks D.C. keeps me in D.C. because I'm a tour guide and I love showing people around when they come to visit. Hopefully some folks who are watching the stream right now, I've either gotten to show around when they visit it or I will when uh, travel comes back a little bit. But can't do tours from out of town. And so... Being in Washington, D.C. is, uh, you know, the only way I can really help other people experience it. But it's a really great city. And, you know, you don't have to be into politics or into the stereotypical, you know, Washington stuff uh, if you want to live here and enjoy it. Richard McCarley says he loves these early live streams that take place before his bedtime. Well, excellent, Richard McCarley. Uh, Kathy says, hi, Rob and Chris. And then Traveling the World says, a.k.a. the DMV. Rob, maybe you can talk about that. That's not the Department of Motor Vehicles. What, what is the DMV? Well, it's also the Department of Motor Vehicles. I had to go there just a few months ago right before COVID. But the DMV uh, stands for District of Columbia, Maryland, and Virginia. So Typically, when you hear folks refer to the DMV in the context of a place, uh, it's, you know, the metro area around here. So you could live in the D, the M, or the V. I happen to live in the D. Cool. So speaking of the D, uh, how, how do people refer to that? You mentioned the city, the district, D.C. What's, what's kind of the local's choice for referring for that place? I think people have their preferences. I think a lot of people that I know like to call it the district. Uh, not, not too many people call it the very formal District of Columbia. Uh, and really, locals typically don't call it Washington either. There's this local uh, you know, divide between Washington, which is the federal stuff, you know, the capital, the federal buildings, and then D.C., which is the local stuff, the neighborhoods, the places where people live. And so there's, you'll often hear some people refer to Washington as one thing and D.C. as another, and that's what they're referring to. Interesting. Uh, so... What's your, what's your least favorite thing about D.C.? The summer weather is by far my least favorite thing about D.C. It's a, it's a hot, humid place to be in the summer, and that's June, July, August, and sometimes even parts of May and parts of September, too. Uh, you know, Washington, D.C. has four seasons, and in a lot of ways, that's great. Uh, San Diego, on the other hand, has kind of one season, and that's also great, but for a different reason. 
But if you're not into heat and humidity, then summer can be a, a bit unbearable. I know when I have folks from California who come here in the summer and come on a tour with me, they're often the folks who are, uh, you know, struggling the most because it's not what you're used to and it's not very pleasant. Yeah, I, I will agree with that. So I, I spent some time living in the V in Virginia uh, as a San Diego born and raised boy. When I got there, I was like, oh, this is this is humidity. This is this is something, you know, and uh, and I, I would just I like I think like I like to bike ride bicycle and I just my face has never been so wet you know it's one of those riding a bike in June or July it's like you wipe your face and I think like five seconds later it just just all comes back again yes uh, biking is my preferred way of getting around it's my favorite way of getting around and it's a uh, it's tough in the summer even if it's you know after dark I might finish a tour in the summer at 9 or 9 30 and I'll be biking home and by the time I get home I'm just drenched in sweat because yeah. it's it's pretty humid out there uh, if you're if you're biking for non-commuting reasons and for a leisure bike ride, do you have a particular like loop or route that you like? So I uh, typically stick to the National Mall, the area you mentioned before, where lots of visitors go. That's where the museums are. That's where the monuments are. And I think it's a bit of an underrated bike ride because it's a giant park. And so if you like riding in a park and not being in the street or with a lot of traffic, that's a great ride. But other people, you know, who are uh, who do it more seriously, they have their preferred trails that they like. Probably the most popular one is called the Mount Vernon Trail. You can go basically all the way from the Lincoln Memorial to Mount Vernon, George Washington's home, uh, on this bike trail, and you don't even have to get on the road at all. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's a that's a good ride. My favorite when I lived there was sort of just to do a loop around the Potomac. You can kind of go around the Potomac up to Georgetown, cross the bridge into Roslyn, then come back on the other side to the 14th Street Bridge, and it was a nice little circle. But in the winter, I've never been much colder than going over those bridges, like with the winter wind also. Uh, Tom uh, asks, how is the crime in D.C.? Uh, well, it's a lot lower than it used to be. You know, it depends on what you're comparing it to. If you're comparing it to the 1980s, then it's it's much, much safer uh, than it used to be. If you're comparing it to other cities, I really couldn't tell you. I don't really study other cities. So if you want to know how does it compare to New York City, I couldn't really tell you. Cool. I think uh, when people think about uh, D.C. of like the 80s, I think it's a lot better than the 80s. I mean, I think of cities just that I've been to, uh, you know, and again, right, there's there's statistics and there's observation. Uh, I've in the, the what I'll call the touristy parts of DC and the parts that most people live, I, I never felt um, particularly unsafe. So I, I think DC is a pretty safe place. And, and the thing I'll say about that too, is that actually, if you think about it, there's no place that has more federal police than DC. So if you're like walking around at night, almost all those buildings have some form of police that's right in them. So I think it's a pretty safe place. Uh, Scottman895 says, I haven't been to DC in quite a few years, but I definitely need to go back sometime. I think you do, and maybe you know someone to say hi to when you do. Um, so, uh, speaking of all the government stuff, like, is it is it weird to have all that government stuff around? The stuff that we all see on TV, but you kind of experience on a day to day basis. Yeah, I, I guess it's a little weird when you think about the fact that most people don't have it, you know. Uh, but at the same time, you kind of get used to it, and it just becomes part of your daily routine. So. I used to live in a part of town where in order to get down to the tours, I would ride my bike right past the Capitol every single day. And a friend of mine who was also a tour guide used to say, you know, some people might get bored of this after a while, but this, this never gets old to me. Just to take in that view, that iconic view every time I go to work, that's, that's really cool. That's something that you can't always say you can do. Have you ever gotten stuck in the presidential motorcade, like when the president's going someplace and they block off the streets, or when you're on a bike, can you kind of get around that? Yeah, so the presidential motorcade is interesting. So I will first say that the president's not the only person who has a motorcade. The vice president also has a motorcade. And the vice president travels a lot more than the president does because the president mostly stays at the White House and the vice president has to travel from his home to the White House. So when people spot a motorcade, most likely they're spotting the vice president's motorcade. They don't realize it because yeah. they, they don't know the difference, but that's the case. Now in DC, they, they really don't shut much down because they're really quite skilled at you know moving those motorcades through town. Now, when one of these people travels to a different city, uh, it can be a nightmare because they have to close down a lot more roads. They're not as familiar with the area. I still, to this day, have people uh, who come on my tour and they live in London and they complain 
about when our president went to London years ago and it was absolute chaos with the motorcades over there. Uh, Brandon Torres says he wants to visit in April, May to see the cherry trees. Do you have any tips for anybody coming to see the cherry trees, like what time and maybe where to see them? Yeah, don't come in May if you want to see the cherry trees. Uh, the cherry trees will bloom typically either at the end of March or the beginning of April. I like to say that April 1st is kind of the date to shoot for. Now, the, the problem is that there's like a four week window when they might be in bloom and only, you know, five to seven of those days, they'll actually be in bloom. So you kind of got to get lucky uh, or you've got to come for a really long time if you want to make sure that you definitely see them. Or you could just live here uh, and then you could just go down when they're in bloom. Uh, but yeah, my, my tip is to sort of set your expectations. Um, there's always something in bloom, but the peak bloom, which is when I think 75% of them are in bloom, that's a pretty narrow window. And then there's like a, like a festival or parade that usually happens. I mean, obviously not this year, but typical years, right? Yeah, so the festival is called the National Cherry Blossom Festival. It starts each year on March 20th, which is the first day of spring. And every weekend they have a signature event. So one of the signature events is the parade. And then another signature event is the kite festival where they have all these kites flying at the Washington Monument. It's really cool. But there's events as part of the festival every single day, uh, you know, weekdays included during that festival period. By the way, the fact that, Rob, you had that date like at the tip of your tongue like that, that's spoken like a true tour guide. I just know it's there, but you know the exact date that it starts, so I'm impressed. Yeah, uh, it's, it's just so that it, ha it happens to start on the first day of spring, which is appropriate when you think okay. about it. Okay. Uh, David says the motorcades move quickly. They are loud, but they are in and out. Um, Gary wants to know, what's the best place to stay mid-range hotel that doesn't break the bank and obviously that's a, these are an interesting question to ask somebody who, who lives there because rob probably hasn't stayed in a lot of hotels so but rob maybe you can take your perspective on that one and then i'll, I'll give my perspective too okay it's good that you have a perspective because you have stayed in way more hotels in washington dc than i have stayed in and so you're definitely my go-to person for hotels on this question but uh, as far as mid-range goes well first mid-range isn't really a, a price so I, I don't know what your actual price is but then it really depends on when you're coming because if you come during that cherry blossom season, prices are gonna be really high, demand is really high. If you come in August when it's pretty slow, you can get some great rates. And so it really depends. But I typically say uh, that if it's your first time, you wanna to try to stick to the downtown core area, you know, around uh, the White House. I like the Willard over there, uh, you know, a little bit lower uh, price might be something like the uh, Hampton Inn or uh, the residence in uh, one of those uh, bigger chains that typically has a little bit more affordable options. Yeah. Uh, and so I like most of the residence inns in DC. I, I think I've stayed in most of them, frankly. Uh, and as Rob said, it's about location. So I would recommend staying north of the National Mall. Um, there's some stuff to the south, but like if you're down there, it's like it's super dead. Um, there's a Hyatt, it's either Hyatt Place or Hyatt House on K Street that I really like. Uh, and then if you want kind of cheaper hotels and you don't mind taking the subway a couple stops, uh, I'd consider staying in uh, Crystal City or Pentagon City. It's just right across the river and you can often save a hundred bucks a night um, by staying at the hotels just over there. But then you won't be able to just walk out of your hotel to go places you do have to take the subway. Uh, Although I will add that uh, the south, about the south part of the city, you might have been right about that a few years ago, but the south part of the city is really uh, quite booming lately. So the area around the wharf, there's three brand new hotels. Uh, I think there's a, a Hyatt House, there's an Intercontinental, and there's a, a Canopy by Hilton, all brand new and amazing locations. So can't go wrong there either. For sure. Thank you for that correction. When I when I think south of the mall, I think like south of the mall bounded by the freeway. Like that's like Sleepy Town. And yes, there is a lot of a lot of new stuff uh, at the wharf. Um, okay. Uh, Kathy says, I've never been to D.C., but I hope to go one day. Uh, and Connor says, I live in D.C. and I'm a tour guide too. Welcome, Connor. Uh, and he asks, what do you think is the best neighborhood most people miss here? I would say Capitol Hill. And uh, the reason I say that is because people will say they went to Capitol Hill, but really they didn't go farther than the Supreme Court or the Library of Congress, which are kind of the first two things right past the Capitol building itself. But you go a few more blocks and you're in the neighborhood itself. You know, East Capitol Street has those historic, iconic Washington, D.C. row houses. Uh, people like to go look at those. You can walk over to 7th Street. You've got the Eastern Market over there. 
you can walk over to the Marine Barracks over on 8th Street, see the show on Friday night when they're doing that. And so I think that that's a neighborhood that people think they saw because they saw the Capitol building. So they say, I went to Capitol Hill, but they didn't see the neighborhood. They didn't see the place where people live. So that's the one that I think people often miss. Cool. Uh, I'll give I'll give two thoughts. Uh, and one is... Um... Adams Morgan, and while Adams Morgan probably doesn't seem like a touristy spot, uh, and Rob knows what it means, many of you haven't been there, like, what the heck is Adams Morgan, Chris? Adams Morgan is kind of like, I'd call it like the nightlife drinking part of DC, and I'm not a big nightlife guy, but it's one of those where if you go to the National Mall part of it, you're like, again, this is all government stuff, this is all museums, where do people live, where do people do that? It's in Adams Morgan, and people typically don't go there because there's just not a big subway stop there. It's like, I don't know, a, a half mile or three quarter mile walk off the subway. Uh, Alex uh, says uh, his favorite hotel is a residence in DuPont Circle, just a couple miles or so from the mall. DuPont Circle is a pretty uh, neat area um, to stay. Uh, I've heard several good reviews of that residence in, so yeah, cool. another good review is always a good one to have for the books. Uh, Sabrina asked, what am I drinking today? Today I'm drinking uh, just some iced tea in my uh, big frosty glass mug that I can stick in the freezer and make it really cold with lots of ice because it's a hot day. Um, Chris Walker asks, are there any good hiking trails in DC? I think that the Rock Creek Park is one of the most underappreciated things in DC. And if you haven't heard of Rock Creek Park, well, that's too bad because it's uh, often overlooked. It's right in the middle of the city. Uh, if you're in Georgetown, you can enter the park right there. You can go miles uptown and into the park from up there. And it's like being in the woods, even though you're you know, less than a mile away from a lot of big city action. And so if you wanna hike, you don't even have to leave town. You could do it right in the Rock Creek Park, which I think is one of the coolest things about DC. Yeah, and I think the way, the way DC is built if you weren't paying attention, you'd never know that this park is there because all the streets and bridges just go right over at a grade level. Uh, and so, uh, as Rob said, probably the best way to get into it, especially if you're just touristing around, is uh, if you're leaving Georgetown or coming into Georgetown along M Street or K Street, which are the two streets into Georgetown, those are some easy accesses into Rock Creek Park. Uh, if, you, if you go to the zoo, that's another good opportunity because technically the National Zoo is in the Rock Creek Park. So that's a good, uh, good place to enter to. Awesome. I think the zoo is almost a good hike in and of its own. That was one of the things the first time I went to the, um, what's it called, the National Zoo, the Smithsonian Zoo. You can probably give me the correct title of it, but the whole thing's on a hill. So, like, you walk down it one way and you're like, ah, I gotta, I gotta walk back up now to get back to the, to get back to the subway. Yeah. People who travel with kids, uh, they push the stroller downhill and that's great. But then when you've got to push the stroller back uphill to leave, that's when it starts to become not so fun. Yeah. Uh, a couple questions about food. Uh, Gary asks, are there places to eat near the monuments? There are places to eat. They're not gourmet places to eat. <laughs> They're not the best places in town. Uh, so there are some concession stands on the National Mall, which are not good. They're owned by a giant concession stand conglomerate. I typically recommend them only if you're desperate. There's some food trucks that come to the National Mall. Uh, they tend to not be the better food trucks. The better food trucks tend to go to the areas near office buildings, uh, you know, K Street, north of the mall, LaFont Plaza, south of the mall. Now, of course, this is all changing because of COVID. The food trucks are struggling so much that they're going anywhere where they can get any business. So I'm not quite sure how true this is going to be uh, next year or in the future, but at least historically, uh, the better food trucks were just a little bit off the mall if you're looking for the good stuff. Yeah, I, I'll completely second that, and I guess on the notion of it, are there places to eat near the monument, uh, do you consider McDonald's a place to eat, or do you consider like a hot dog cart a place to eat? If so, yes. If you don't, then I wouldn't eat there. Um, I think if you, are, if you are near the National Mall, uh, probably my favorite things to eat, there's like a potbelly sandwich that's kind of like tucked in south of the mall in the business district. There's also one kind of north to um, Union Station, which is kind of by the Capitol building, has a like a neat food court and a lot of things to eat in there. So those are the uh, things I find closest to the mall, which isn't really the monuments, but I, I just sort of tacked it in there as well. Um, Sabrina uh, asks, maybe not the question about touristy eats, but she asks, where do you enjoy dining in DC? Well, I think that People think of uh, the iconic Washington, D.C. restaurant as the Old Epic Grill, 
Uh, and I like eating there, and my favorite dish to get there is oysters. And I always try to go during the oyster happy hour. So if you do want to go there, try to look that up and see if they're still doing it. Not sure if they will in the future. But I personally am uh, a lot like Chris in that I don't dine at a lot of you know Michelin star uh, type restaurants. I'm more of a uh, you know lower end of the spectrum kind of person. And I think that DC is one of the best cities in the whole country for fast casual. Uh, you know the the food that's it's not quite fast food. But it's not a sit-down restaurant. You don't have a server. You're ordering it from a counter. Chipotle is kind of the first uh, fast casual restaurant. But they've just exploded here. So now you can get fast casual in just about any kind of cuisine. And so some of my favorites are kava, which is Mediterranean food, rasa, which is Indian food. And so if you like that kind of stuff, uh, you really can't go wrong. Great. I'll give uh, I'll give two of my favorites in D.C. One is called uh, Moby Dick House of Kebab. Uh, they have a location near DuPont Circle. They make really good Mediterranean food, kebabs that they kind of grill on the sword sort of thing. Uh, and then I also enjoy uh, – there's no In-N-Out Burgers there, so I don't eat an In-N-Out Burger. But uh, I enjoy this place called Good Stuff Eatery. Uh, and in D.C., it's behind the Capitol building in kind of that Capitol Hill neighborhood. I think they make pretty good burgers. Um, yeah, they've got a Georgetown location now too, and Good Stuff do. is You're our right. is our local burger joint because the 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 chef Spike Mendelson he's like the local celebrity chef he's been on those cooking shows so uh, you know Shake Shack's good but Shake Shack's a New York thing so if you come to DC you want to go to Good Stuff because Good Stuff is it's our local place. Yeah, and the the DC area is also where Five Guys got started, uh, and I I don't I don't think any of their original locations are in the actual the district right they're all kind of outside um but if you got a car and you're going around uh one of the original locations is in alexandria you can actually get there off the subway uh near king street um and i i do think the five guys in the dmv region are better than the five guys uh, in the rest of the world uh jake bishop uh likes nando's peri peri chicken uh david m says i just had the uh most amazing food truck D.C. Peruvian food, Jamaican food, just amazing food truck food. Um, let's see. Yeah, those are all great choices. And Nando's, I didn't appreciate this, is not in very many U.S. cities. It's a big worldwide chain. You can get it in London and you can get it in all these different places in Europe. But there's very few places in the U.S. where you can get it. So I've been eating it for years and didn't even realize it was something special. Yeah. Uh, Sue asks if there is a typical D.C. food. Yes and no. Uh, it's not a single food like your Philly cheesesteak or your Boston clam chowder or your deep dish Chicago pizza. It's not like one defining thing, but there are a few things that are kind of unique to the area. So one is called a half smoke, which is a sausage on a bun. Uh, I really like those. Ben's Chili Bowl is the restaurant that it's uh, famous, you know, the famous half smoke restaurant. Ethiopian food is a big part of DC food culture. There's not a lot of uh, food, Ethiopian food in a lot of places in the country. And so there's many places you can get it here. Uh, and then, you know, pupusas, the Salvadorian food is also big here because uh, Salvadorian immigrants typically concentrate in Los Angeles and in Washington, D.C. And so outside of those two places, there not a lot of Salvadorian food, but we have some amazing stuff here for sure. Yeah, and I think uh, just picking off that list, like if I were just to pick one, and it's one of the ones Rob mentioned, uh, it's Ben's Chili Bowl. I think Ben's Chili Bowl is a really um, original, unique restaurant to D.C. because they have this thing called the Chili Half Smoke. The Chili Half Smoke, it's like, what, half a smoked sausage and half a hot dog or something like that. I probably got that wrong, but it's like two things that are like merged together, uh, and they put like chili on it. It's just, it's it's really good. Um uh, Wutai One Nostalgia asks, have you ever eaten at Mount Vernon that is amazing food? Yeah, it's been a long time since I have, and but I've heard some fantastic reviews from people who have gone there recently, which kind of surprises me, uh, to be honest, because people think of Mount Vernon as being a bit of a tourist place, and so you wouldn't think of a tourist place as having great food. But it's also different from your typical D.C. tourist place because it's not a government site. It's a privately owned residence, and so they can do with it what they wish. And having a great restaurant is one of the things that they decided was going to be important. Yeah, I think – so speaking of government places, I feel like the best museum or government place I've eaten at is the – um, what National Museum of the American Indian? Um, they have like a really interesting what restaurant that's in there. Like it actually serves like kind of Native American different food than your standard um, what fish sticks and uh, chicken nuggets. Yeah, 
And that's exactly right. That's part of the cultural experience that you get when you go to that museum. And for that same reason, the African-American History and Culture Museum also has a pretty amazing food court. Yeah. As far as museum food goes, those two are definitely the best. Cool. I'll have to check out the African-American Museum. I've not yet visited that one since they've been open. Uh, Nightwolf asks if you've ever met a Secret Service agent. Yeah, I meet Secret Service agents all the time. I mean, they're not that secret. Uh, they're out and about um, around town. Uh, the Secret Service has a podcast, if you're curious, and I met the guy who produces the podcast last year at DC PodFest. So, yeah, Secret Service, they're, they're around. Um, and so if you want to say hello, just say hello. Cool. Uh, Gary asks, uh, how has parking been in the monument areas? Uh, do you recommend a car? Is parking tough to find? I don't think that parking is ever particularly tough to find. The challenging thing is that it's limited to three hours. And so if you park in any of the National Park Service lots or any of the streets that the National Park Service has jurisdiction over, you gotta be out of there after three hours. And so for some people that's perfectly fine. For some people they wanna spend the whole day and then they gotta go get a garage instead. But there's a few garages nearby. I really don't think it's a big deal right now. Uh, and do you recommend a car to see the area? Uh, so when you're down by the monuments, a car is not necessary and in fact will probably be a hindrance because everything's close enough together that you can walk from one spot to the next. When I do the Tripex DC Monuments Tour, it takes about two and a half to three hours and we just walk from one to the next to the next. And if you have a car, you kind of got to go to the car and then you got to see the monument, drive to the next one. There's not a place to park easily there. And so I say if you're going to drive in, just drive in, park it, take your three hour you know, time and go around and see this see the sites yeah and and so gary my recommendation on cars is if you're there to just see dc and stuff inside dc don't get a car uh but if you want to go see um you know thomas jefferson's house or you want to go see some of the other things that are in the region then then a car is really helpful to do that uh you could consider you know just getting one for a couple days of your visit too if you just want to go see that stuff Sabrina says, I've heard that DC has lots of Korean food. Is that true? It, it, the DMV has a lot of Korean food. Uh, the best um, Korean food, the best Vietnamese food, the best Chinese food are not in the city, not in DC. They're in the suburbs. And so if you go out to uh, Annandale, Virginia, some of the best Korean food that I've ever had in my life. Uh, and I haven't been to South Korea, so I can't compare it to the real deal, but I can say that of other places I've been, it is it is really good. Yeah, and so uh, I will second that uh, DC does have a lot of Korean food, a lot of pretty good Korean food. Having been to Korea a couple of times, it's not as good as the Korean food uh, in Korea. And I will also say, being from the Southern California area, I don't think that DC Korean food is as good as that in LA. Like LA has a whole epic Korean scene, uh, but the DC Korean food, I'd, I'd probably put second to LA of the Korean food that I've had in the US. Um, and and yeah. as someone who's been to LA myself, I think that's a fair assessment. Great. Um, by the way, I want to thank Wu Taiwan Nostalgia for uh, getting rid of some of the trolls in the comment section. So thank you for putting those folks in timeout. Uh, Matthew says, are there regular Uber drivers in DC? Yes, of course. Uh, you can get an Uber pretty much any time of day, any day of the year. If you need a ride, you can find a ride. Yeah, I, I will say of places having to get an Uber, I found DC just one of the easiest. Like Uber drivers literally just hang around in the city and so like when you request an uber it'll be like where's it coming from oh around the corner because somebody was just sitting there waiting for uber rides the biggest troll is here right now which is ben from the travel man podcast welcome thank you for uh coming out from under your bridge i appreciate it ben um drew says uh 90 chance that it's raining right now in dc rob is it raining right now i'm trying to look out my window it's dark already here but i do not believe it's raining okay um so we've had a lot of questions about like being a tourist in DC. Uh, what do what do locals think about all the all the tourists that come to DC? Well, you know, I think uh, the stereotype is that locals love to complain about the tourists, and I don't think that that's necessarily the most true. I think if you're standing on the wrong side of the metro escalator, you're going to get a you're going to get a stern talking to by a local. So if you don't know what that means, then uh, I think. We've got plenty of videos that can help explain it. But for the most part, I think locals understand that people are here and they're on vacation. They want to have a fun time. And if you, you know, ask someone a question on the street, I think most likely you're going to get a pretty helpful answer. Yeah. 
so speaking of tourist stuff, and we've had a lot of questions and discussion about the National Mall and the Smithsonian's, how often do locals visit those places? And, and I'm sure you visit them more than others being a tour guide, but you know, how often do you think the, the typical D.C. resident would visit the mall and the Smithsonian's? Well, not, not nearly enough. Uh, I think it's kind of too bad because, you know, it often gets pegged as like a tourist thing to do. And so then, you know, it, it's the weekend time and you decide to go instead, see, the, see a movie or go to a baseball game. And that's, that's fine. That's all fun stuff, good entertainment. Um, but I recently got an email from someone who uh, was a fan of my YouTube videos. And he just wrote in to say that, you know, he lived in D.C. his entire life and worked a job his entire life. And it wasn't until he retired in his 60s that he actually went out and did all the tourist stuff. And he said, I can't believe I just wasted all these years and didn't you know, go and explore and enjoy while I had the chance. And I'm glad I got to in my retirement, but it's too bad that I waited so long. Yeah. Well, hey, it's glad uh, that he finally got to it, for sure. Uh, Edwin says, thanks for the stream, guys. Uh, thank you for the kind words, Edwin. We appreciate it. Um, Melissa says, uh, what would be your must visit or see for the first time tourist that goes to DC? Well, I think you got you to gotta see the monuments. And so obviously I think you should come on a monuments tour. Uh, TripX DC has monuments tours, but you don't have to. They're all free. They're you know all accessible. And so I think you got to see the monuments. You got to stand on the top step of the Lincoln Memorial and get that iconic view of the city the first time you're here. I think you got to go inside the Capitol and do one of those uh, capital tours with the red coat tour guides. Those are always great. But beyond that, I think that you got to decide what you like. You know, if you're a big, huge history buff, then the history museums are a must do. If you're, you know, a sports fan, then we've got all these cool sports that you can do. And so I don't think that it's as simple as like, here's your checklist of 10 things, do all these and you'll have a great trip. But, you know, make a trip based on your own interests. We have so much to do for all interests. Uh, random political black guy says, bro, if I don't get some respect, I'm going to go to a different live stream. Better yet, I'm just going to go watch King of the Hill for free. By the way, I'm not a troll. Hey, it's up to you uh, where you want to go. You're happy to join. I have not been picking a lot of your comments, though, because uh, this is generally not a political live stream. Uh, we keep the political topics for for other folks. Um, Drew Lawson uh, asks if you've been to Rustico for beers yet. I have. Have you, Chris? I have not. What what is Rustico? Am I missing out? I, I think you're I think you're not a big beer guy. Uh, I'm so not. Rustico's a it's a beer bar, and the company that owns Rustico also owns a few other uh, bars around town and a brewery, Blue Jacket Brewery, and so they are kind of very well known among folks in the beer scene as like a good place to go if you want to drink a good beer. Cool, uh, Ben says I'll have to get Chris and Rob on my podcast at the same time to talk about trolls, bridges, and traveling. I'm uh, I'm down for that, Ben. Uh, and uh, and yes, uh, Alex uh, says lots of trolls today. Us moderators sure are busy. I appreciate uh, the support from all of you, including you, Alex. Uh, David says the most underrated museum is the National Portrait Gallery. Um, let's see. Uh, Milko asks if you can get a tour in the White House as a tourist. Uh, yes. Sometimes, not right now. Uh, they did say that they're maybe going to phase them back in in September on like a very, very limited basis. And so unclear, you know, what the capacity is going to be. Uh, when you do tour inside the White House, you get to see some rooms in the East Wing and some rooms in the residence and uh, or rather um, not, in, not in the residence, uh, but in the main part of the building. You do not get to go see the West Wing. And so you do need to have a special invitation to go see the West Wing, which I've been fortunate enough to do. But for the typical tourist, you do not get to see the rooms you know from TV and movies. Gary asks, how's the casino? I think you mean the casino in Maryland? I haven't been. I have been to two of the casinos in Maryland. So there's the what MGM casino that's at the National Harbor. Uh, and then there's also another casino that's up near Baltimore, like in like an outlet mall that's up there. And as someone who goes to Las Vegas a lot, um, in my opinion, they're really sad. Uh, and, I, and I just say that because like, I think there's so much regulation of the casinos that regulates how the games are, how they have to be. They have to rope off like the casino floor so it's like there's these checkpoints to go into where the games are and then the restaurants are in different places and so the casino floor is lively but then the rest of the hotel's dead because they have to separate the businesses from the casino and so i i personally 
um, like the MGM hotel in Vegas versus the MGM in the National Harbor. They just, they don't feel like the same hotels at all. The one in Vegas is really lively and the ones uh, in the National Harbor, uh, not so much. And so Gary says, yes, the National Harbor. I, uh, I wouldn't put that as a huge um, like thing on your list to go to. And uh, Lashana says, the one in Arundel Mills is the Maryland Live Casino. Thank you, Lashana, for that. Um, okay. Um, so uh, speaking of museums, somebody brought up the National Portrait Gallery, but what's your favorite uh, museum in D.C.? Uh, my favorite is the American History Museum, and that's for the simple reason that I'm a big history guy. I love learning about history, and I think that that one is great if you're into American history topics. Uh, I think the National Portrait Gallery is another great one, and it's not on the National Mall, so it typically gets overlooked by people who only focus on the National Mall. Uh, my personal favorite off the beaten path or underrated museum, I think, is the National Postal Museum. That one's right next mm -hmm. to Union Station. Mm -hmm. yep. And it's just got some amazing stuff in there, stamp collections. It's got postal history. It doesn't get a lot of crowds because people don't know about it and it's not on the mall and just, yeah, like it. Yeah, I think I think that's a cool one too. Uh, and this this is one of those, uh, There's the, obviously we're talking about like touristy stuff for DC and living in DC. You know, one of the things that I kind of enjoyed about spending some time living in that region was just every weekend, I would like check another one of those things off the list to be like, what's one I haven't been to? Uh, and there's also like a national building museum, I think. I mean, there's like, there's a lot of like these really interesting museums um, in DC. My favorite uh, is the National Air and Space Museum. Uh, that's also OC Girl's favorite because she really loves all the space stuff. And there's there's two of them. There's one in DC on the mall, and then there's a second one that's out by um, Washington Dulles Airport. So if you're flying in or out of the airport, um, you can check that one out on your way in or out. Uh, that one's got like all the big planes and um, what the the black one, the the one the Concord, right? Yeah, it's got the disco it's got the spatial discovery too which was yeah, a big that's cool. acquisition a few years ago. The one on the National Mall is also under major renovation oh, right now. Right. So I guess it's closed because of COVID and I think some renovation is continuing, but it is going to be way better when they finish the renovation in like 2 3 years from now. Yeah, I bet. And and I feel like the National Air and Space Museum typically has later hours than the rest of them too. Uh, which is nice. Milko says, I appreciate this time slot for the live stream, guys. Our, uh, our pleasure, Milko. Sally says, I love history, beaches, and animals. Would I be covered in all of those visiting Washington? Well, history, absolutely, 100%. Uh, animals, we have the National Zoo, so if that's the kind of animals you're looking for, yeah. Or you could go to uh, a park and look at some of the wildlife that's in the park. Uh, there's a lot of wildlife like deer and other things like that in the Rock Creek Park. Uh, beaches, well, there's not a beach in Washington, D.C. There are beaches in Maryland. You might not think that those are the best beaches. If you're from Florida, you might not think they're the best. But for us, they're the best because they're the ones that we can go to. The Uniplex says, I'm enjoying the live stream today, but your last co-host, Chris, was so cute. It's a hard act to follow, but very interesting live stream today. Uh, the Uniplex means uh, that, Rob, it's hard to follow our eight-month-old daughter. Um, and uh, but, uh, but Rob does know a lot more about DC than she does, so thank you, Uniplex. Can't argue with that. Uh, HB says, what's a good souvenir to get from DC? Oh, that's a good one. Well, I mean, do you like souvenirs that you can wear? Do you want uh, a shirt? Do you want something that you can put on your fridge? Uh, I think that the best souvenirs are not the typical things that you get from those souvenir shops or those like roadside uh, stands, but rather you can go to a store like the shop in DC. I think it's called Shop Made in DC, or there's another store that just sells stuff from folks who live here. And so it might not be what you think of as like a snow globe or like a Christmas ornament with the Capitol building on it, but it's something that you can take back. And when people ask it, you about it, it's a good conversation starter. So those are my favorite souvenirs. Or a Trip DC t-shirt, of course. There you go. Right on. There's nothing wrong with a snow globe, though, um, <laughs> unless, unless you get it too big and you try to carry it on. Uh, Alex says, uh, the thing I was thinking of is not the Concord, it's the SR-71 Blackbird. That's what I'm thinking of. Alex is a huge plane buff, so thank you for the correction, Alex. Um, let's see. Uh, Milwaukee County Elevators asks, would the W Hotel be a nice place when traveling to D.C.? It's in a great location, and I think the W has a good reputation. Have you stayed there, Chris? I have not. 
I have not stayed at the W because it's just like it's like right across the street from the White House, and so the room rates are always sky high. I have gone in there to use the restroom though when I've been walking around DC. <laughs> so um, I think it would probably be a nice place to stay. I've stayed at a number of W hotels around the world, and I've I've always been happy with them. Though W hotels are kind of funky, so if you're expecting a, a normal room, that's definitely not what you'll find at the W. It also has a very famous uh, rooftop bar, so if you don't want to stay at the hotel, you could always overpay for a cocktail on the rooftop bar. Hmm. Good deal. Uh, Rob, what's your favorite season in D.C.? Uh, my favorite season is the fall, specifically October and November, and I pick that because it's the best combination to me of not too hot, so the temperature is very pleasant, and uh, relatively small crowds. So spring is also very nice weather-wise, but the difference between fall and spring is that spring has the trifecta of uh, cherry blossoms, uh, school field trips, eighth grade field trips, and uh, spring break. And so you just get way bigger crowds in the spring than you do in the fall. And so since I like pleasant weather and relatively smaller crowds, I like the fall. Yeah. Now, I will say, mentioning winter, if you like no crowds and you can handle the cold, uh, OC Girl and I, we've been there on some trips in January or February, maybe in snowstorms. And there is something special being like on the Lincoln Monument when you're the only person there. Though it, it, yeah. it, gets, it gets really cold. So I'm actually not recommending <laughs> that for most people. I'm just saying there is there is something special about that time of year, too. I think uh, your, your California... Uh, Roots are, are showing now because it's like an average of uh, average high of like 40 degrees Fahrenheit in here in, in the winter. So it's not even below freezing, but yeah, if you're coming I from Alaska, it might be very pleasant. I will say, though, I've been in the D.C. area for like every major snowstorm, like including the ones that closed <laughs> the government for like a week. So like the, those, they are colder than San Diego. Almost any place is colder than Southern California. So, um, uh, And I'm sure people from Maine would be like, Bro, DC is pretty warm. Uh, David M wants to know how bad are the downtown restaurants, vendors, and shops doing with uh, lots of people working remotely? Uh, very bad. I think uh, the downtown DC business improvement district put out some stats yesterday. I don't want to quote them because I didn't memorize them, but uh, the ones I remember were that uh, hotel room occupancy was down over 90%. Uh, the number of people just going downtown on a typical day was down over 90%. I mean, uh, any business that's already, you know, relying on a lot of people, a lot of foot traffic is, you know, going to be having a tough enough time in the best of times. And now you lose 90% of your people and it's going to, it's going to be tough. Milko asks, what's your favorite sporting event in DC? My favorite sporting event is the 2019 world series. <laughs> Uh, Washington Nationals were the world champions, of course. I like uh, baseball games. Uh, I think that they're the most accessible in the sense that there's a lot of them. They typically are in the time of year when a lot of people are here in the spring and in the summer. And um, so it's easy to catch a game. The tickets are relatively affordable. It's family friendly. And so that one's my favorite, but you could go to a basketball game, pro basketball, college basketball, hockey. Uh, I don't typically like football just because the games are way out in Maryland and they're only once a week and the experience is very good, but uh, I do like those other sports. So Rob, what about the traffic in DC? What's, what's traffic like? Is it, is it good? Is it bad? <laughs> well, it's definitely not good. <laughs> uh, I guess how, how bad it is depends on where you're coming from and whether you typically drive during rush hour or not. Uh, but you know, it's, it's interesting because not everybody drives here like in some places a lot of people take the metro but you know before covid i think metro used to do something like 600,000 trips per day per weekday on average which sounds like a lot but then remember i said at the beginning that 6 million people live in the washington dc metro area so a lot of people still do drive especially uh, folks who are out in the suburbs that's really the only way of getting around so if you're going in to or from the suburbs uh, you're going to be sitting in traffic with a lot of other people yeah, for sure. I uh, so I I think that um, as someone who grew up in Southern California and Southern California is known for bad traffic, I find the traffic in D.C. to be worse. And I find the traffic in D.C. to be worse because there are over bridges that all go into the city. Um, and so obviously the the way to do that is to to walk or take the metro or those sorts of things. Which um, Evan 
Cortez says the traffic is not is is not as insane as before. Maybe the 14th Street Bridge construction or something like that. But uh, that is uh, good to hear. Um, David says traffic in DC. Thank you, Amazon. DCA is going to be nigh impossible to navigate by road. Are they doing a but? Is Amazon doing a bunch of construction around DCA, or that's just where they're planning to open? Because they're planning to open in Crystal City. Yeah, they're planning to move their second headquarters or whatever they decided to call it over to Crystal City. Uh, I think they there was already some vacant office buildings in Crystal City, so immediately they just moved into those uh, buildings. But they're planning on doing some construction and building some new buildings. So I think uh, if you are doing airport pickups, it, it might be a little miserable for a while. Yeah. Uh, Wu Tai wants to know about DC traffic on the 4th of July and that he made that mistake once. I, I, I assume it's bad. Well, it there's not. A, it's bad because there's so many road closures because they set up a whole perimeter around the National Mall and uh, you can't drive on a lot of the roads. They've got the parade going on. They've got the perimeter for the fireworks. And so if you try to drive, it might not be that there's a lot of people driving like on a typical work day, but just because there's so many road closures, it's really hard to navigate. And so I would not ever recommend anyone for any reason try to drive on the 4th of July. Yeah, that's a good tip. I mean, I, it's almost the same thing here in Southern California. You know, if there's fireworks, it's just, it's toast. Uh, Drew asks, if you ever hang out in Clarendon in Arlington County? I do not. Uh, I think that that is uh, kind of like the Adams Morgan. Like you said, it's it's known for being like a nightlife destination, although there's plenty of stuff that happens during the day as well. And um, typically people who live in Arlington like to hang out in Clarendon and people who live in DC typically don't. Sabrina um, asked a question that you answered before, which is what's your least favorite thing? And so I'll just say that was uh, the summertime. And if you want to hear his whole answer, uh, you can replay the archive again. Ben from the Travel Man podcast asks, are there any uh, murder walk tours or ghost tours in Washington, DC? There are uh, definitely ghost tours. Uh, several different companies operate ghost tours. I do not run a ghost tour as a tour guide. I think ghost tours are really tough to do well uh, because people have different expectations. Some tell you the history of you know the people who perished and uh, that's not the same as going to a theme park during the Halloween uh, you know, events and having somebody jump out at you and scare you. And so it's, it's tough to do a good ghost tour. Now some of the folks who do them do amazing ghost tours, but I'm just not one of them. Uh, Vic says uh, he watched the Yellow Productions view of the Grand Hyatt Washington D.C. It did not appear very nice at all. Yeah, that was one I was really disappointed about the Grand Hyatt. I really kind of hold Hyatt to a high expectation, uh, but that one did not do it for me. Uh, Gary asks, uh, how many nights would you suggest for a visit? Two enough if you drive in? Question mark. Uh, two's probably well. Right now, since so much is closed, uh, two is probably plenty, uh, but. In a previous era, two is probably not going to be enough. Uh, you know, you could spend an entire day in one museum if you were really into it. And so I typically say that if you're coming from a short distance and you think you might be back in the future, try to make it three, you know, full weekend. If you're coming from a far distance and you're not sure if you're ever going to be back or you're not going to be back for a really long time, try to make it five uh, because that'll let you do everything that, you know, you want to do and not leave saying, man, you know, I, I wish I had planned more time because I didn't get to do some stuff I really wanted to. If, uh, if people are moving to DC, uh, what's, what's the housing market like? It's an expensive, it's an expensive housing market. Uh, but again, depend, depends on what you're used to and where you're coming from, you know, if, compared to San Francisco, it's like a bargain, but compared to many places, it's uh, very expensive. And so, uh, it, it's an expensive market. Now there have been some anecdotal reports this summer that because of COVID that rents are falling, uh, that people are getting really good deal on rent. Uh, so if you're moving here right now, you might be able to get a good deal compared to what it used to be. Uh, the sales market, uh, I have a realtor friend who told me that it's like extremely hot right now. He said there's almost nothing on the market. There's limited supply. Interest rates are the lowest they've ever been and everybody wants to buy a house. And so if you want to buy, uh, it's going to be pretty tough. Are there some particular areas that you'd recommend people look at if they're trying to move there? Well, what I recommend is start with where you're working. Uh, and so especially if you have to go into an office or a physical location, I know that the world is changing now in, in 2020 and, and maybe that won't be the case 
in the future, but start with where you're going to be working because you, you typically don't want to give yourself a really long commute uh, if you can avoid it. And so uh, start with, you know, the area where you're working. If you like that area, then you can stick with that area. Uh, in the city, if you really want to live in the city, a lot of people um, nowadays, they start in the southern part of the city, like the southwest part of the city or southeast over by the, the Navy Yard because there's just a ton of apartment buildings. And so you can just walk into the leasing office and lease one the same day. It's very easy uh, versus some of the older parts of the city, like, you know, Georgetown or Capitol Hill. You're looking at apartments in a row house where it's just a single landlord. And so it's not where you're just walking into a leasing office and walking out with the keys that day. Yeah. Um, for people who live in D.C., what are some typical weekend getaways? Like where where do y'all go for your, your weekends? Well, I think it depends on whether you like uh getting away to the city, uh, to the beach or to the country. So if you like city trips, you know, you can get on a train and be in midtown Manhattan in three and a half hours on the train. You can be in Philadelphia in a little over two hours on the train. And so there's lots of options. If you like exploring cities, if you like the beach, like I said earlier, you can go to Delaware or Maryland. Um, typically the Delaware beaches have a bit of a better reputation, I think by locals than the Maryland ones, but they're both nearby. And then if you like the country, you can go to the Shenandoah National Park, which is a short drive away. You can go to Harper's Ferry in West Virginia and stay in a cabin. And so, you know, go in any direction, north, south, or west, and there's something for you. Uh, DS asks, Rob, what's your favorite waterfront area in D.C.? Uh, I think my favorite waterfront area is probably by Nationals Park because I like baseball. And uh, there's some really cool places to eat and drink right on the water uh, before or after a game. Uh, the Wharf is an amazing waterfront and Georgetown, the Georgetown Waterfront Park. It wasn't always a really nice park. That's a fairly you know recent uh, development as far as DC history goes, but it's an amazing, very beautiful park that you can hang out in now. Yeah, on those three, I like the Georgetown Waterfront Park that used to be a parking lot. I remember parking there before when it was a parking lot. Uh, it's got really neat views at nighttime, like the Key Bridge and things like that. So, um, And then George. I mean, all those places are kind of fun to walk around. Uh, Chris Walker wants to know, what's the best place to chill out? Uh, <laughs> I, that's, a, that's a good one. A stumper. Stumper. Even. Uh, I mean... Find a nice tree on a hot day and lay on the grass and, ch and chill out. Uh, I think on some hot summer days, I'm given a tour in the morning. Afterwards, I just find a nice shady spot and just rest for a little while. Good answer. Uh, HB asks if there are good antique thrift stores in D.C. Uh, there, are, there are some. This is not something that I typically do is to browse those type of stores. So I don't have a personal favorite or I don't have a recommendation. Um, there's not a ton, but there's not none either. So if you want to do it, it's something that you can do here, but it's not like it's a destination for that kind of thing. Cool. Uh, my, my final question for you, and then I want to get into, I want to get into our giveaways. Uh, but my final question for you is what's the biggest tourist trap in DC? Like, is there some place that people shouldn't spend their time or shouldn't spend their money? Yeah. People ask me this all the time. I don't think that DC has the equivalent of say Times Square, which is what I would consider like the quintessential tourist trap where you're not gonna uh, have a lot of fun and you're gonna wind up spending a lot of money. Uh, the National Mall, I think is something that is amazing and locals should definitely experience it. Uh, but I would say Madame Tussauds, the Wax Museum uh, is probably one that I would put in that category. We have so many amazing museums. Uh, and so unless you've already seen all of them already to uh, go and spend your money and time at the Wax Museum, I don't think it's really that good of a use of it. Yeah. So here, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give an interesting uh, spin on a response to that question, which is to say that I think D.C. does have the equivalent of Times Square for New York. I mean, it's the National Mall. I don't mean that in a way to say it's awful, though. But it kind of is a tourist trap, not in the sense that people shouldn't go there, but in a sense that sometimes people only go there, right? Like they get they mm. get trapped by it, and you're like, Chris, you're taking a weird definition of this term. But I am only I am only saying this to say that uh, you if you visit D.C., you should not just go to the National Mall. You should see all the other areas around it that, that Rob's been talking about. To, to, well, to I see certainly that, agree with that. Yeah, good deal. Um, uh, and, uh, so actually the last question, cause traveling the world, uh, asked it about a previous question you asked, can you rank your favorite day trips? And, uh, he has watched your video. 
Yeah, so you put me on the spot to remember what I uh, said in my uh, video now. So uh, a day trip to me is not one where you're staying overnight. It's one where you're kind of coming and going. I think for uh, most folks, the best day trip is to take the water taxi from the wharf down to Old Town, Alexandria, uh, do some stuff on the water, find some restaurants and coffee shops over there that you want to you know, spend some time at, go around the torpedo factory, art factory, uh, and just, you know, have a day of it and then take the water taxi back in the evening. I think that's one of the best day trips that you can do. Cool. All right. Well, you know what time it is? It's giveaway time. So we're giving away two shirts in this live stream today. We're going to start with a Trip Hacks DC shirt. And so in this case, Rob actually has a question that he wants to ask you all. So Rob, if you answer this question, so if you answer it correctly, you get... A Trip Hacks DC you get this. shirt. Yeah, the, right on. The Trip Hacks DC shirt. And so the question to win this one is, what is the name of the restaurant that I go to uh, to get oysters? I mentioned this one earlier. Uh, they have the Oyster Happy Hour and like to go there for oysters. All right, that's good. So if you can answer Rob's question, uh, just put it in the chat and we'll pick the first person uh, to answer it. Um, now, the second question I'll ask, and I'll just go ahead and ask this at the same time, which is, I mentioned that I have a favorite restaurant in D.C. since we're talking about restaurants. What's my favorite restaurant in D.C.? So, where does Rob like to go for oysters? Where's my favorite place to eat? You answer those, uh, and you'll get the appropriate blue or yellow short. So, let's see. Um, uh, Sabrina says, uh, na na Natural Postal Museum? I don't think that was the answer, was it? Uh, Sabrina says nat natural portrait gallery. Uh, Yoshi Elevator says old Ebbett Grill. That is correct. All right, Yoshi Elevators, congratulations. Uh, you win a Trip Hacks DC shirt. Uh, and Yoshi, if you you send me the details of where you want and your size, I will get it to Rob. Um, I think you know how to find me. Probably my Yellow Productions page, links in the description, or you can send me an email to chris at yellow.net. It's got two W's on it. Um, okay, so now I'm kind of looking to see what are people saying about where I like to eat. And I'm going to put this here because I think it might be – I think Sabrina might be the first person who said it, but I gotta go look at two pages. Uh, and so, Sabrina, uh, congratulations, you win the uh, yellow production shirt. Sabrina, same thing, let me know, uh, email, Facebook, where you want to go and your size. Uh, so congratulations both to Sabrina and uh, Yoshi Elevators. So. Uh, Rob, first of all, I want to thank you very much for being on the live stream today. Uh, and if people want to find you, uh, see more of your videos, find out about your tours, how, how do they do that? Uh, so if you want to check me out on YouTube, go down there in the video description. And Chris has placed a link to the Trip Hacks DC YouTube channel. And you can subscribe and watch some of the videos. And then if you want to sign up for a tour, then you can head on over to the website, triphacksdc.com. Right on. That's cool. Well, definitely check out Rob's videos if you're interested uh, in D.C. Uh, and if you're visiting there, definitely check out his videos about D.C. They're really, uh, really good, informative videos. Uh, not a lot of uh, drone shots, backflips, and, and water ball jumps. Uh, all right. Uh, and everybody who was on the live stream today, uh, thanks for hanging out as well. Uh, for the next live stream, I'll see you guys next week. We'll do the live stream. I think it'll probably be Tuesday around this 4.45 LA time again. As usual, I post updates on my Facebook page. Uh, and with that, we won't say goodbye because we'll see you in the next video, either on Yellow Productions or on Trip Hacks DC.